In today's video, we're going to talk about how you add fractions that have different denominators. If you've watched my video on how to add fractions with the same denominator, you know the steps are, first, keep your denominator the same, second, add across your numerators, third, simplify if needed. Well, what happens when you have fractions that have different denominators? Well, the steps are exactly the same, except first you have to make sure you have fractions with the same denominator. And how do you do that? Well, you create equivalent fractions. Let's look at the first example. What is 2 sevenths plus 3 fourths? Well, our denominators are different, so we have to get them into an equivalent fraction. And we're going to do that by using something called the lowest common multiple. And what that means is we're going to find the multiples of 7 and the multiples of 4 that are the same, or they match. So let's look at what, is the what are the multiples of 7, and multiples of 7 are 7, 14, 21, and 28. And then we're going to look at the multiples of 4, which are 4, 8, 12, 16, 24, 28. We've now gotten one that is the same for both 7 and 4 which is 28. So that's the lowest one we have that's common between the two. So 28 becomes our new denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out 2 sevenths is the same as what number over 28? Well, 7 goes into 28 four times. So if you multiply 7 times 4, you get 28. Whatever you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So 2 times 4 is going to be 8. Same thing for the 3 fourths. 4 goes into 28 7 times, so 4 times 7 is 28, 3 times 7 is 21. Now we have two equivalent fractions, both with a denominator of 28. What you want to do now, just like earlier, in adding fractions with the same denominator, 8 plus 21 is going to be 29 over 28. If you wanted to simplify that, you could put it into a mixed fraction form, which would be 28 goes into 21 one time with a remainder of 1. So 1 and 1 28th is your answer. Example number 2, 5 eighths plus 1 ninth. So we can start by listing out multiples, but I have a feeling that's going to be a lot of multiples to write out. So another way you could do this is to simply multiply 8 times 9 because you know they're both going to be a multiple. 8 times 9 is 72. That will be our new denominator. And we're going to create equivalent fractions. 8 goes into 72 9 times. 9 times 5 is 45. 9 goes into 72 8 times. 8 times 1 is 8. If we add across, we get 53 over 72. Now, to simplify this one, you got to find factors that are the same of each, and I don't know of any off the top of my head, so I think this one's in its lowest form. All right, let's look at example three. Six sevenths plus two ninths. Again, we can list the multiples out, or we can just multiply these guys together. And seven times nine is 63. So that becomes our new denominator. 7 goes into 63, a total of 9 times. 7 times 9 is 63. 6 times 9 is 54. 9 goes into 63 7 times. 2 times 7 is 14. If you add these across, you're going to get 68 over 63. And that's an improper fraction, meaning your numerator is bigger than your denominator. So you can convert this to a mixed fraction by saying 63 goes into 68 one time with 5 left over. 5 over 63. All right, last one. What is 1 third plus 5 sixths? I'm going to show you a quick trick on this one that you can use. It follows the same principle as what we've already covered in the above examples, except it's just going to take a few steps out. So 3 times 6 is going to be 18. And this is what we call the butterfly method, and it's really cool. So now that you've done that, you're going to cross multiply the numerator of this fraction times the denominator of this fraction. And that's going to be 6. 
and you always write the product by the numerator you are multiplying by. So I'm going to change my colors here. What is 3 times 5? And that's going to be 15. So we're going to keep this the same. And you're going to say 6 plus 15 is equal to 21. 21 over 18 is the final answer. If you wanted to simplify that, 18 goes into 21 one time with a remainder of 3. Now, if you look at that, 3 can go into 18, right? So that means it can be simplified down even further. If you divide this by 3 and this by 3, you get 1 and 1 sixth. Pretty cool. So now that you've gone through these four examples, try this one on your own. Leave your answer in the comments. What is 2 thirds plus 1 fifth? Good luck. If you want to see more math help videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And check out my website at improvemath.com to download your free printable worksheet. Thanks for watching.